Hey, welcome back to the True Lane YouTube channel. I'm Chelsea and today I'm filming a new episode of my knitting podcast. It's been about five weeks since my last episode and I'm probably going to sound like a broken record again today because I am just, I've been so busy is what I'm going to keep saying. I've been so busy. I just haven't had time and that's just where I'm at right now. In the last five weeks, I have finished three objects, one of which I finished <clears throat> nine and a half hours ago <laughs> at midnight last night, but also in the last five weeks, I've started a new job, so I'm now working full-time at an architecture firm in marketing, and I'm also working part-time at the yarn shop. This week, I'm working seven days a week. It's really a lot to keep up with, and I don't have a lot of free time anymore, so naturally, my knitting progress has slowed quite a bit. And because my progress was so slow, I was getting very, um, I, I was feeling really bummed about where my knitting progress was and all of the projects that I was working on and that they weren't progressing. So every, I knit usually at lunch. I have, I usually take like a 30 to 40 minute lunch and, you know, between walking to the place I want to take my lunch at, whatever, I end up knitting for maybe like 15, 20 minutes <laughs> during my lunch hour. And uh, then like at home, I have a few hours in the evening usually, but <clears throat> excuse me, May in particular has been a particularly strenuous <laughs> month because our yarn shop's local yarn crawl thing is happening. And so I've had a lot of extra shifts at the yarn shop that won't be happening like regularly in my schedule. So I've had a lot of evening things come up too. And it's just like, I get home from working a long day and then have, you know, two and a half hours, two to two and a half hours of work at the yarn shop. I get home at eight o'clock and I'm just like done. <laughs> I don't want to speak to anybody anymore. I can't even like hold my eyes open long enough to finish a row of knitting. So it's been kind of a tough time. But on the flip side, I'm loving my hair. I'm used to it now. It's been five weeks, like I said, and it's lightened up quite a bit as just you know from washing and whatnot and my bangs have grown out a little bit I actually just styled them off to the side today but the hair is going great <laughs> so I, I'm kind of sorry as for my last episode I maybe shouldn't have filmed right after I got it done because uh, it was very jarring to me if you watch the last episode but you'll probably be able to tell that it's lightened up quite a bit anyway I've got about 40 minutes before I have to leave for work today, so this is going to be a really short and sweet episode. I mean it this time, <laughs> really. So I'll start with my first finished object, which is my souffle tee, which I'm wearing today, and I think it's just the nicest color. This has become, I mean, since my sweaters are out of rotation for the spring summer season, this has become my favorite thing to wear. I knit it in a dapple by Brooklyn Tweed which is a 60% merino and 40% cotton blend. And it's a pretty weird yarn. I, I, I've I, always kind of loathed it. <laughs> we carry it at the yarn shop that I work at and I've never enjoyed stocking it, touching it. I just, there's something about it that in, in hank form, I don't like. Wearing it, it's awesome. It's so soft, it feels like breathable. It, it keeps me at a regulated temperature. I feel like it's not too warm, not too cool. And I've just, I really actually enjoyed working with it, despite all the little kind of cotton nubs that, that came through while I was working on it. But overall, I'm super, super happy, <clears throat> super happy with the yarn choice. So the color that I knit this in is called Barely There. I always think it's called Petal because it's like a petal pink, <laughs> but it's called Barely There and it's one of their newest colors. So as soon as we got it in the store, I wanted to knit it up right away. And I thought this would be the perfect project for it. This is the Summer Souffle by Laura Penrose. And uh, I did um, there, I did a modification and I, I did something I would change. So I knit the second size, which I think was to my measurements. However, this DK weight yarn is a little bit fluffy, plump, a little bit larger than other maybe recommended DK weight yarns. And so I sized up a needle size. Instead of doing a four, I did a seven. Instead of doing a six, I did a seven. Four millimeter to four and a half millimeter. And I'm very happy with the fabric, 
but I definitely could have made a size one instead of a size two. When I wear it, it kind of puckers, so you can tell there's a little like extra room that doesn't need to be there. Hello, ringlet. And so that's, I probably could have gotten away with a size one, but I really like wearing oversized clothes. It doesn't bother me. I think maybe just the style of this top would be better suited a little more, just not more fitted, just not puckery. <laughs> So that's that, but I really like where it, I'm wearing sweat shorts, so don't, don't judge this outfit, but I really like how it fits and falls and I just think it's a great piece. I did add a centimeter to the bottom ribbing and what did I do here? I think the sleeve ribbings are the same as the same length as the uh, neck ribbing. And then this, the bottom, I think I doubled it. So it's like an inch and a half, a centimeter and a half. This is why we should take notes on things. I remember I had a strategy when I was knitting it, but now I can't recall. But I did lengthen the bottom ribbing a little bit because I thought it would be cuter. Um, and did I do a tubular bind off? I did. Yep, tubular bind off, tubular cast on, I'm quite sure. Mm -hmm. And the other modification that I made is that I did half, I picked up half the amount of stitches for the ruffle. So in the pattern, this ruffle is supposed to be twice as tight. And I just thought that it would be a little too much for me. So I picked up half the amount of stitches and otherwise knit the ruffle exactly how the pattern tells you to. And I just think it turned out really sweet. There is like... A part of me that feels like a sea creature kind of like it looks like coral from like the Great Barrier Reef in Australia <laughs> that's like very specific I know but part of me feels like it looks like that sometimes but the rest of me usually just thinks it's a very cute and sweet top and this was kind of the first thing I cranked through after I filmed my last podcast sorry I'm picking up some more cotton nubs and I just got super motivated to work on it and cranked it out. So I finished it probably about three weeks ago, maybe even four, and I've worn it a lot of times, maybe like once or twice a week. And it's kind of funny now that I don't work at the yarn store. Well, I do, but when I wear hand knits to my architecture office, nobody notices. Like nobody comments on my hand knits, as opposed to when I go into the yarn shop, it's like, oh my gosh, you finished your so-and-so project. You know, you're wearing it for the first time. And finally, on like my third week at the architecture firm, one of the partners was like, so is that a uh, store-bought shirt or, or did you make that one? And I was like, oh, I knit it. Thank you for noticing. And he was like, so what's the, uh, that frilly part called? And I was like, a ruffle. And he's like, makes sense. So it's just a totally different dynamic in this office. <laughs> people not really, uh, you know, it's not normal people. I don't even know what I'm trying to say here, but I do miss going into the yarn shop every day and debuting my new piece and having everyone fawn all over it. It's basically what I'm trying to say. So I actually have plans to knit another one. It's a great tea pattern. Here's the thing. Everyone's knitting teas right now. I want to knit a tea so bad. More teas. I know I did this one, but. And to me, I'm like, if you find a good tea pattern, can't you just, I don't, I don't know. I feel like since I already have this pattern, like I don't need to buy six more patterns for different teas. The thing about this one is it is a circular yoke, which isn't like my favorite thing to do. But because I'm so happy with the fit, I'm like, I must, there must be something about it that I do like. And I just feel like the yarn was a really good fit for it. I like how, how structured the yarn kind of makes it. It's like, it's not stiff, but it really like holds its shape nicely. And there's so many beautiful colors of dapple that I just, I kind of want to make some more just without the ruffle, like some plain teas just using this pattern. It'd be so simple to do. 
and I, I don't remember how long it took me, but like I said, my knitting has been so chopped up. If I like counted up the hours on this, I, I definitely could have finished it in like a week's time for sure. So <laughs> it's always really like motivating when you finish a project that you're excited by and it doesn't take very long and it turns out great. You're like, let me knit a hundred of those. It was so good. <laughs> but as always, there's a million other things to knit. So I did put some elastic in the collar, which I think was a great choice. It was kind of, it was definitely a little too wide. I think maybe the elastic has made it pucker a little more because the neck is like taken in. It kind of creates some folds maybe. But again, I don't really think about it when I'm wearing it. And because there's like a ruffle going on, I don't know. It's, it's not that noticeable. It's not like people look at me and it's like, oh, her shirt fits really weird. Nothing like that. So this is my Summer Souffle by Laura Penrose. I love it. I highly recommend the pattern. I don't know how many ruffly things I need in my wardrobe, but it definitely makes me want to knit the regular souffle tee out of all mohair, which is something that I love and brings me to my next finished object that I finished at midnight last night. And that is my very first cumulus blouse. It is divine. I almost want to cry <laughs> because this was such a fun and special project to work on. Such special yarn, such special memories. I'm just stoked about this. So this is a pattern by Petite Knit. It's the Cumulus Blouse. It's a pretty popular pattern. I knit mine out of Olivia and Oliver Fibers Surrey Silk Yarn, which is a Surrey Alpaca Lace uh, blend. Surrey Alpaca Silk blend. And it is 328 yards, I think, per skein which is kind of like a sport weight yardage, so it's a little fluffier than like a lace weight, but I still held it double, believe it or not. And it has like, I tried it on last night right after I bound off and it is like wearing a cloud. It's so wonderful. I love the color. This is a one of a kind colorway that's unnamed. I snagged it from one of her shop updates last summer. And it's just this beautiful, uh, what, what did Hannah call it? Basil color, I think. Like a summer basil color. And uh, I mentioned Hannah because this is like a micro cowl that we did together. We both had the cumulus blouse on our to make lists. And she asked me if I wanted to knit it up at the same time as her. And I was like, sure. She beat me by like two and a half weeks <laughs> because of my crazy schedule. But it was so much fun to just like text each other about it every day when we were working on it text each other progress, talk about the fit, talk about different strategies we were employing for knitting it that were like helpful or whatnot. And so I'm just like, the more I worked on this and like after I picked up the, the neckband, I was like, this is gonna be really cute and I think I'm gonna wear it all the time. And I just think it's beautiful and I wish you could feel the fabric like it won't be the same touching your computer screen, but just imagine. It's so nice. I didn't make any changes at all to the pattern. And I had um, four skeins of my Surrey yarn. So I used all of them and I have no yarn left. <laughs> this is what is left. <laughs> if you could believe it. It wasn't your classic game of yarn chicken. I wasn't concerned about the yarn length because I was knitting the body and then I was like, I'll just knit the sleeves however long they turn out. So I divided my last bit of yarn into two for the sleeves and I knit the right sleeve until I ran out, which was one row before the final decrease. And after the final decrease, you do that cord bind off. So I was like, I left a little bit of yarn for that. And then I knit the other sleeve to see to make sure they would match. The other sleeve I knit to that point and I had plenty of yarn left. I was like, okay, 
I didn't quite divide my skeins 100% evenly, so I have plenty of yarn on this side to add to the other sleeve. So I finished all the decreases, I did the I-cord bind top, trimmed my yarn, went back to add it, the rest of the yarn to this sleeve, and pretty much ran out like <laughs> maybe 10 stitches away from finishing the I-cord bind off. And the I-cord bind off takes so much yarn because you're basically knitting every stitch like three or four times. And it just, it's a yarn sucker. So I was running out, I had like, you know, this much of a tail. I had the tails from where I joined in the new yarn right at the end. And I, I literally knit, I did my I-cord with those, like the tails of the other yarn and I finished it. And I did decrease <laughs> two stitches on this side so that I could save just like literally that much yarn. And it worked out. So. It wasn't really yarn chicken, it was a little bit of yarn chicken at the end, but I beat it. I won. And I have this beautiful sweater to show for it. I'm wondering if I made it a little bit longer than the pattern recommended, but I don't think I did. If I did, it might have been like one or one and a half centimeters, but the, the drape on this thing is just amazing. I cannot wait to wear it. It's kind of a perfect day to wear it today, actually, because it's a little bit overcast. And I think this would just be like the perfect cozy layer on like cool spring morning or late summer evening. Like just this color is so fun. Like I'm, I'm just enamored with this because I literally bound it off last night and this is my first time like touching it after blocking. It's already dry. It dried within, um, you know, these nine hours, I set the fan on it at nine, at uh, midnight last night, and then just pulled it up to film right now. So that is my cumulus blouse. I knit the first size. It's, it, it fit great before blocking. I haven't put it back on now since taking it off the blocking mats this morning, but, um, I've heard this is a pretty oversized pattern. So I definitely, uh, thought the first size would, would work for me. So that's my cumulus blouse. It's my first one. My friend Megan, uh, Cat Cat Knits on Instagram, I think has made three. We just talked about this yesterday. And I have to say, I totally see the appeal. I just, I'm, it was really fun to knit. Despite the fact that I like got stressed out about how long it was taking me. Irrelevant. It was really fun to knit. And I kind of want to make more like I just feel like it's really such a good layering piece like I feel like I'll wear it a lot over just a white t-shirt so it like I don't know pops a little I don't know I just, it's great I highly recommend it that I now understand why this is such a popular pattern and I do I do want to make another one so that is my next finished object two garments I didn't think I'd make that one <laughs> I didn't think I'd finish it by the time I was ready to film my next podcast, but as you can imagine, my podcast has been like pushed off and off and off as my schedule has been bananas, which is a word I've been saying a lot lately. Everything's bananas. I'm like, I've noticed it a lot and I don't know where it's coming from. I don't even like bananas. So my next finish item is my pair of socks for April, which turned out so cute. I love them. Look at how the yarn like around the toe just that little loop. It's so cute. So this yarn is um Sorella Yarns nylon sock in the color the shop around the corner which is inspired by one of my favorite movies You've Got Mail and this colorway looks just like the movie. It's so sweet. There's such a nice like peachy haze over all of the colors and I just think it's so fun how it like striped up. I've never had, I've never had a yarn like this before. I usually do like speckly yarn that's more like evenly distributed, but I just, I had so much fun knitting these up, like seeing what color was coming around the corner. And I really like seeing how differently it stripes in like the slip stitch heel flap here. They're a little bit thicker cause you're knitting flat. And then here when you're also knitting flat, like the colors kind of bunched together and then 
yeah, I just think this whole situation, like kind of bullseyeing at the toe is such a cool, cool feature. So this, the pattern I followed as usual is um, vanilla socks on nine inch circulars by the Crazy Sock Lady. The only difference I made is doing two by two rib on the cuff, which is my favorite way to do things. So I finished these maybe like last week at some point. And I know they're my April socks. I finished them halfway through May, but that's okay. I'm not like, I'm not stressed about like how much I'm finishing. It's just my schedule with my chaotic cast on energy did not line up. I had my chaotic cast on energy and cast on so many projects. And then all of a sudden it was like, like a light switch flipped. Like all of a sudden I had no time to work on any of them. So because I cast them all on and they've now been like sitting on my needles for a month, I'm already kind of tired of everything and I'm like, I need new projects even though they haven't got work on them. They've just been like living in the back of my head. So April socks got done mid-May, totally fine. But um, this is a nice like blend of projects I feel like. My tee, my mohair sweater, I mean Surrey sweater, my socks. I just like, I like the color palette all together, you know. So those are my finished objects for this episode. I also have been super behind on updating my Ravelry. I need to take finished object photos for many things, including many finished objects that I had in my last podcast. I just haven't had daylight because when you're in the office eight hours a day and you get home and it, I digress. Last episode, I said that you would never see my niece's cardigan again because I was going to give it to her while she was in town. I did not get around to doing the button band or sewing on the buttons at that time, so I do get to show you a little update here real quick. And I did the button band and I've blocked it and it's uh, adorable. I am obsessed. And I did pick out buttons for it just from Joanne Fabrics, and they're these really light tortoiseshell buttons, which, there you go, you can visualize. I think they're gonna be adorable. I just watched the tutorial on how to sew them on today. I'm gonna use Suzanne Bryan's method. She's a genius. And because of that, I found I need another uh, button to do the backside to like secure it. I thought it was a really smart technique in a way that doesn't like pull the knitted fabric. Um, you're kind of anchoring it with a, a smaller clear button on the other side instead of just sewing the sewing thread onto the knitted fabric. So now I have to go back to Joann's and get some more buttons to anchor the back. So <laughs> I thought this project would be done, but it's not quite. I got some sewing thread. I know you can use yarn, but I just, I wanted to do it this way. So I got some thread that matches perfectly. Uh, the yarn, which is Barocco's Ultra Wool in the color lilac. And so I'll probably, this will probably be the last time you see the cardigan. Actually, that's not true. You'll probably see it in the next episode because maybe I'll have my nephew's cardigan done by then and can show them both in their total completeness. So that's just the last thing that needs to go on her cardigan there. So it's like kind of a whip and just kind of living living out there. Okay, I've got 15 minutes left <laughs> before I need to leave. It's not like a hard and fast I have to leave then because I, I left myself some wiggle room, but we've got a few whips to go through. One of them I made some progress on just this morning, and it is the Lost Tank by Friday Knits, and I've, I've gotten my back panels going well, and I just started doing the armhole increases. So technically like it goes like this this is the back panel <laughs> and I'm knitting it in this very adorable color called kawaii it's like a really light kind of clay pink with neon rainbow speckles from Madeline Tosh I'm using their wool cycle sport base and I love it this is a fingering weight pattern but it's knit on 3.25 millimeter needles which I wanted a little bit not stiffer fabric, but I wanted the gaps filled in a little more. So I decided to go with the sport weight. I just love how it's speckling. I think it's so sweet. And so this is 
you know, this is my project that I'm working on at work because we carry the yarn there. I just, I haven't, A, like I don't have as many shifts at the yarn shop, and B, they, we've been really busy lately, so I just haven't had time to knit there at all. But I do have some progress going on this, and I think it's kind of jumping into, into priority status because I think this will be so cute. Like, oh, I'm so excited about this pattern. If you've seen it completed, I don't know, I'm a big fan. And I was envisioning it Shay, like under like a white button up, just having this like little cute pink speckly situation, like with a little overshirt, I don't know. That's just how I envisioned styling it this morning. So I've got, I don't even know what's next in this pattern. I've got another round of increases to do and then, and then who knows where it will go from there. But I have really been enjoying working with this yarn it's got like, it's all recycled wool, which is really nice. It has a much less silky feel than 100% superwash merino wool. It's almost got like a flatness or a dryness to it, but not in a bad way like cotton. <laughs> Sorry, cotton. But I, I really like the feel of it. It just, it seems like, even though it's 100% wool, it feels like a better warm weather garment option to me than like Madeline Tosh's TML or DK or whatever the other bases are. So that's been getting a little love lately. I think it was just a strip of fabric in my last episode. So I've definitely made some progress on that. These next ones, well, let me just touch on my Louvre sweater because it has not gotten very much work. Oh, random needle. Um, I'm still on the yoke. And, oh, it's so good. It's so good. I thought I was finished with the yoke increases, but I was just finished with the sleeve and yoke increases. So the sleeves are done, but the yoke increases will continue. And I really need to move on to a bigger cable because it's like, it's a struggle. But this is a petite knit pattern, the Louvre sweater, and I'm knitting it in Sorella. Yarns Classic DK in the color newsprint from the Ottoman New York collection, and I'm absolutely thrilled with it. So I have I have made some progress on this for sure since the last episode, but just not not anywhere exciting. Haven't split for sleeves. Haven't you know finished uh, done this done that, but just touching base that I am still working on it. The color variation is so nice, and this is by far the best DK weight hand dyed yarn I've ever worked with. It's so silky soft. It's so plump. It's so drainy. It, the speckles are so even. It's wonderful. Highly recommend. So there's that. And then my new whip is my nephew's anchors jacket. So I am knitting my nephew an anchors jacket and the yarn I'm using for that is Barocco Vintage. And I think this color is called okra. It's kind of a nice heathered jade green and kind of a, an herby green, similar to my, my basil cumulus blouse. But I'm about, I think I have two more uh, ribbing kind of sections to go. But I'm really excited about this based on how much I enjoyed knitting my niece's anchors cardigan. I'm, I'm doing two sizes larger, I think, for my nephew. He's five and she's two and so yeah I've just I've gotten started on this <laughs> and this is also one that's kind of going to jump into priority status because I, I want to send them off to them I I got cut off sorry um I really am excited for them to have handmade cardigans from Auntie Chelsea and I just think they're going to look so cute together I did get buttons for his as well I think they're right here yep so I got these kind of darker shell buttons from Joanne Fabrics and I just think they'll be really cute. I'm very excited. So I'm knitting the uh, size six years old to seven I think and uh, uh, following the pattern however on um, my niece's cardigan I did the ribbing on the four millimeter needles and then the body on 4.5 millimeter needles and I think I will do that again. I just like how the fabric turned out and I want it I want it to be a little bigger than not so the kids can kind of grow into it. 
So this is, I think, my only new cast on from the last episode. <sighs> I'm trying to be so good and not cast on any new projects, but that's kind of leading me to like buy a lot of yarn in anticipation of casting on projects as soon as I finish these. <laughs> so that's been a whole thing, but I'm pretty sure that is my last whip. Let me, let's see. Anchor's jacket, louver sweater, socks, don't have any. Summer souffle, lost tank, cumulus blocks. Okay, that is everything. So what's coming next? I think I already mentioned my Semper Slipover V-neck is the name that I'm going to be knitting out of Santa Scar on Sunday. The, I think this is a petite knit colorway. Yes, it is. In this like bright poppy red orange color with the matching mohair. I'm so excited about this. I have, I saw an outfit on Bowden.com that I was obsessed with and I bought the dress. So I have the dress that this, uh, vest is going to go over and it's going to be so cute ignore the like the pink lining because that that kind of destroys the vibe here we go but it's going to be this with this little v-neck slip over over it i'm pretty stoked um <laughs> the dress fits pretty well it's a little more um it's a little bit longer than i want it to be i, I literally want it maybe like an inch and a half shorter and part of me wants to take it to a tailor and part of me wants to do it myself. It's also a little bit of a fuller skirt than I usually wear because there's like, uh, not really pleating, but kind of, maybe it is kind of pleating, like puckering. So it's pretty full and I usually like a more kind of columny straight skirt, but it is a really, I am happy with the fit overall and I think it will just be really, really cool with the vest over it. So. Um, I haven't cast that on yet. Now that I'm done with my cumulus blouse, I have a little room to do that, but I gotta, I gotta <laughs> crank through a little bit more stuff first, I think. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to talk about the rest of my products that I have planned before I launch into other stuff. So my May socks, which I might do this last week of May, um, are going to be kind of fun. I'm going to knit... Allison Marie's soft ruffle socks. There's a hair on my mohair that I'm trying to uh, liberate. I'm going to knit Allison Marie's soft ruffle socks with a bunch of leftover mohair that I have from my sweater number 14 v-neck. I'll, I'll need like two grams of it, but I just thought this was such a nice color combo. So the sock yarn that I'm going to be using is Gedifra. It's an Italian sock yarn merino sock wool and it's 80 percent superwash virgin wool 20 percent polyamide and it's this really nice color and I, i'm pretty sure it's called coffee it is called coffee which is why i had to purchase it and it's really soft great feel and um the socks have a little mohair ruffle that you knit into it and i thought this would be a good color combo for just like a nice neutral pair of socks with a little extra oomph and they're shorty socks, which makes me think, again, totally delusionally, if I knit them in, I could knit them in a week, <laughs> but that's like abandoning all my other projects, which I'm not sure I want to do. But even if I finish these in the first week, in, first week of June, they're still going to be my May socks, just like my socks I finished in May or my April socks. It's all going to work out. I'm not too concerned, but I'm really excited to knit these up this this has been sitting on my on my bookshelf just like this for the last like two or three months and I think the time has finally come to cast them on so I think they'll be really cute nice little neutral solid sock and so that's coming then a couple of my plans include acquisitions so one of the things I'm really excited about is Petite Knit's new terrazzo bag when I saw that tote bag, I was like, I need it today. <laughs> and so she uses a really interesting yarn combination for the bag, which is like a gray standard wool, worsted weight, whatever. And then a thread weight yarn, which is like below lace. 
that is a make it tweed yarn from Rico and so it's literally a thread with tweed bits on it that you hold together with any yarn that makes it rainbow tweed awesome however I'm taking a shortcut because at the store that I work at we have Naro Madara I think it's called which is a uh, gray yarn with a uh, rainbow tweed in it so I got this the other day ready to cast on the shirazzo bag the day it came out I did buy the pattern um, but I'm not sure how in the order of things I'm, I'm gonna do this I'm so excited about this bag I think it's awesome I've never knit a bag before I've never this is like a whole new this project is gonna have new everything for me so I got this yarn I'm very excited to use it and conveniently my granddad is a leather worker so he's just gonna make me the little tab um, for the strap so I don't have to order one from Denmark which will be really nice so and it'll be kind of cool because I'll be able to like pick out the color I want and like customize it a little bit depending on whatever materials he has but it's gonna be a totally custom bag and I feel like kind of special because like I'll have knit it my granddad will have tooled the leather strap for me it'll be a nice you know family project <laughs> so I'm really excited to work on the Terrazza bag soon again I don't have dates here for you to, to tell you exactly when that'll take place but I'm really excited about that <sighs> Noro Madara is a worsted to Aran weight yarn that is 100 grams 200 meters and it's a 60% wool blend with 30% silk and 10% alpaca it's a yarn I've been eyeballing for a long time just wasn't sure if it was gonna be a garment or what the project would be but I think it'll be perfect for this bag and and the bag like there's lining sewn into it there's twill um, ribbon sewn into it so it, it's really gonna be an adventure but I've recently become determined to get it to have a knit bag like I also really like the clutches that Petite Knit has designed um, I'm, I'm sure there's other uh, other bags I should look into as well but that one just had my heart the yarn combo the leather strap the tote style I, I'm sold another thing I'm going to be working on is a sample for the yarn store that I work at that I'm really excited about and it's going to be another Madeline Tosh wool cycle sport project it's kind of my favorite yarn right now I just love the base I think it's wonderful and I want to keep working with it so I will we spent months agonizing about this color combination but it finally came together the other day and I'm gonna be knitting Tori Yu's uh, Shocking Stripes sweater if you've seen the pattern you'll know she did a light neutral base with a like a highlighter colored accent and that's exactly what I'm gonna be doing too so this main color is Madeline Tosh antique lace it's a really nice kind of gray beige neutral color and then this accent color is called neon peach and it's glorious I love this color I love it on mohair I love it on the sport it's such a good color it's like orange it's pink there's it's a tonal but there there's definitely no it's not a tonal because a tonal uses one color it is kind of variegated because you can probably see like orange and pink in there but it's just it's gonna look so good like with the slip stitches in this pattern and seeing it on camera I feel our decision fluff um, has been confirmed so again this is gonna be a sample for the yarn store so it's gonna live there and I'm totally cool with that I'm excited to have like my work on display which will be really thrilling but it was really fun coming up with this color combo with my boss because we we paired so many different colors together trying to find the right one and we finally settled on this one and I think it will be really cool and pay good homage 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 to <laughs> Tori's sample another project I guess just like some dream projects that I want to do but I don't have yarn for yet still the Son and Stunden tea it's still on my list I just haven't had an opportunity to order the 
Pascali uh, cotton cashmere. And so maybe that'll be like a later summer project. Even though I want to wear it right now, I just don't know when I'll find the time, yo. And then I had another thing I wanted to mention. Oh, there's a crochet tank top that I found that I am obsessed with and I really want to make one. I don't find too many crochet garments these days that I want to make, but as soon as I saw this one, I was like, I can see myself wearing this all summer long. I'm pretty particular when it comes to garments and fashion. Um, in my previous life, I was a fashion blogger and like clothes were my life. And this just felt like something that I would like buy for myself back in those days. And to be able to like have the skills now to create one myself and like design it in terms of putting colors together and just, I don't know. I found this pattern and it really thrilled me. I can't think of the name right now, but I'll, I'll put it up on the screen. I, I want to say it's like Adelaide or something like that, but I could be totally off and thinking of something else. But that is something I want to make really soon too but girl like if I have an hour to knit every day I don't know where I'll find the time I have spent a couple mornings waking up at 5 a.m. to knit like until 7 uh, but that's that's not a very sustainable practice because the girl needs her sleep I do have a couple other acquisitions to share one of them is this really cool local yarn that I got at a pop-up the other day from Skagit Woolen Works and this is a natural yarn of course and it's a Romney 100% Romney grown on Lopez Island processed in small batches in Skagit Valley and spun on Whidbey Island and this is the natural gray color it's a DK weight 4 ply 260 yards and it's surprisingly soft like when I feel felt it I was like are you sure this is Romney <laughs> but it's it's just a really nice natural and natural colored fiber and I think it will make a really cute just like hat like a cozy kind of fisherman's hat for to wear like you know on the beach on the boat just a nice like natural setting I don't know I was really excited to support them and get this nice special skein of local yarn and then let me check the time it's 10 7 I kind of got to get going but my, my big acquisition is I got my Lord of the Rings yarn collection in. It arrived. And I really want to take you through... I really have to get going. Mm hmm. It'll be okay. I really want to take you through my order because <laughs> I was an emotional wreck the day that this arrived. I was on day one of my uh, female cycle. <laughs> and feeling very emotional on this day. And so to have my order arrive and have it be this beautiful, how dare it, I sobbed. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. So to complete my sock club collection from last year, I got one sock skein of the Lord of the Rings colorway. This is a colorway that Brandy had years ago before I was a knitter, before I knew anything about hand dyed yarn. And it was inspired by the cover of The Fellowship of the Ring, one of the editions. And it's just a really nice light blue, green, cream variegated color right? with some warmer colored speckles like rust and yellow. And I just think this is going to make a really, really pretty pair of socks. So I was super happy to get this one. Beautiful. And then I'm really excited. I got some boucle yarn. Buclay's having a moment, we all know this. So I think this is going to be like a good a good first fall project. Like I will be stoked to work on this in September and October. And I bought it for the uh, Something Cozy sweater, which is a pattern by Shayna Billow that um, I learned about from Nitty Natty. And I was just really, I love a kind of sweatshirty feel and I was really surprised by how little yarn it used. So I only need three skeins of the boucle, and then I will be holding it with a mohair. More to come on that in a moment. But this is the Legolas colorway, and it's such a nice, soft, sagey green. Like, it reminds me of that lamb's ear plant that's, like, really soft and velvety is what it looks like to me. And the boucle is 100% superwash merino wool, 240 yards for 100 grams. And it's just... 
so nice. I'm really glad I'm like a little bit removed from opening this package so I'm not sobbing on the podcast, but, and the labels are just gorgeous. I'm really excited about this blue, blue clay texture. So that was really fun. Another thing I got, so this label is a little different. This is the skein I got last year from the sock club, the monthly club. And I really wanted to make a Monday sweater out of this. So I took a little risk and I got two more skeins of the same yarn instead of getting all three from the same batch. Where is the difference? The colors are so consistent. They look like they were all dyed in the same pot. I'm truly astounded <laughs> by the talent. Like, she must have taken some good notes, somebody said when I showed them. I don't remember who it was. But the consistency is mind-blowing. So this color is called the Deep Breath Before the Plunge. And it's on a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon base. That's 463 yards per 100 grams. And it's just this really nice kind of gray neutral with a little warm kind of antique beige color in there. With brown and green speckles. And it's just <sighs> divine. So I'm really excited about this. And I don't know, I don't, I don't know when this guy's going to get knit up either, but. I, I don't have time to go into my stash theory today, but the amount of yarn I've been ordering has been stressing me out, I gotta admit. And I just can't knit fast enough to clear them out, but <laughs> these are, especially the Lord of the Rings yarn, I'm, I'm gonna stay excited about. Who can say with other stuff when I order it on a whim if I'm going to want to knit with it a year from now when I have the time? You'll remember? You might not. I, I filmed a vlog last year when I first started knitting of going to Portland on a little yarny road trip and so much of the yarn I bought on that trip I'm just I'm not gonna work with so it makes me a little anxious like buying yarn now that I don't have time for because I'm like in a year from now am I gonna be still excited about this in the way I'm not excited about the yarn I got in Portland last year I would say the Lord of the Rings yarn doesn't really count but some other things I've bought to enhance my stash, I'm like, if I don't work on this soon, will I still be enthralled with it later? Hopefully the answer is yes. But um, there, there may be a de-stash in my future. I don't know how to do that, but I'll find a way. Couple other things. Because I got the Sock Club last year, I got a mini set of, there we go, the tonals to use for contrast colors. So I'm really happy to have all, at least all of them represented, even though I, even if I couldn't get like sweater quantities of literally everything, um, I've got a little taste of it. So we've got Pippin, Mary, Frodo, Aragorn, who's the dark blue? I'll come back to you. Gandalf, the light of Erendil, Boromir, Gimli, Samwise, and Legolas. And that blue is speak friend and enter. There we go. I knew I could get it. So they just look oh, so beautiful all lined up together. So I'm really excited to knit all my Lord of the Rings socks soon. Like that's going to be a lot of my stash busting this year is making my collection of Lord of the Rings socks. Mm. The last thing I got is two skeins of Aragorn on the Boucle DK base. It is this yummy cocoa brown black color that is so <laughs> if I was going to describe yarn as sexy it would be this because Aragorn this it just, whew, and it's such a like strider color oh, my lord of the rings people know what I'm talking about and it's kind of fun because uh, Marlene Knits who you may already know she's a youtuber here on youtube I hate when I <laughs> say stuff like that she's a youtuber here on the knitting uh, youtube world and she's coming to visit me this summer really soon actually in like two months and we both got two skeins of Aragorn to make a um, neck out of like the terrazzo neck from Petite Knit 
because we were like, that's something Strider would kind of wear. Like if he was like, you know, being a ranger in the winter, he'd need like a wool like <laughs> neck kind of thing. So we got two skeins of Aragorn to knit that up and it's going to be such a fun project to work on together when she's here. And I just think this color is awesome. I've never knit with anything this dark before, but it's just, it's going to be such a fun project and a good piece to have. So that was the Lord of the Rings yarn I got. I'm going to let, um, hello, I'm going to let Marlene, uh, show what she got. Um, I guess when she arrives, she probably won't film a podcast while she's here at my house, but I'll let her, um, do the big reveal whenever she gets around to it. And... That is everything. I'm about 15 minutes behind schedule, but that's okay. I'm just gonna like wrap up here, put on my work clothes and head out the door because I'm, I'm going a little early because my friend Willow from Willow on the Water, who's an amazing hand dyer, is going to be at our local farmer's market today. And it's called the Valley Made Market. If you're in the Pacific Northwest region, you should totally stop by on Sundays. I don't know when she'll be there again after today, but you should follow um, wool, the wool wagon is what she used for her pop-up. It's literally a truck, a yarn truck. It's so cool. Today will be the first day I'm going to see it, so I'm excited. But it's called, yeah, Wool Wagon Whidbey is her Instagram, and she'll like post about where she's going to be, when she's going to be there. But I'm going to stop by there before work, and then... When I get home at four, I'm gonna just like knit the rest of the day. I think <laughs> that's the dream anyway. It's always the dream. So I think that's everything I needed to catch you up on. Like I said, quick episode. Um, I'll try and be back sooner rather than later. I promise. <laughs> if my, as fast as my little fingers can knit. So thank you so much for watching today and catching up with me. I will plan to see you in the next episode. If you want to be notified when that goes live, please consider subscribing, like this video, leave a comment if you feel so inclined, and I will catch you in the next episode. Bye!